Welcome everybody, we're on to uh, round two here. Thanks for that sub, Snookins, by the way. Uh, round two, RJ versus Krogoth. Uh, these are, it's gonna be the battle of, first battle of uh, the Owen ones. So I'm sure both these guys are hungry to win. I know RJ is, he's just coming off a race last night, so. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Alright, let's get this thing going. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I expect a pretty good race here. Um, I don't think there's anything too crazy uh, separating these two. Obviously, um, RJ being a past winner definitely gives him a leg up. Um, Krogoth got there eventually. That's all that matters. Uh, it's a bit of a delay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to try to line things up a bit here. Okay, that's somewhat better. It's about as close as we'll get, I think. Um... Yeah, looks good. All right, so we're on to round two. I'm gonna assume most people watching have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Uh, so I'm gonna try to stick to the mostly the technicalities, and not much of the uh, you know, telling people what's what's going on with the story and stuff like that. I'm gonna focus on technical stuff. That's what I like to focus on mostly anyway. Uh, so yeah, nothing, obviously nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, except getting stuck on Tracy. I'll slow you down a bit, but yeah, nothing, uh, Nothing going on too crazy the first few minutes here until we get to Starman or until we get to uh, the hill. I think Korgoth just started a little bit late, but that's no big deal. That's why we follow the on screen timers. Countdown on the website, it's a bit weird. First round was really fun. A lot of a lot of cool races round one. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. It's always great once these things start getting kicked off and the races start getting going. That's when that's when we start having fun. And we're getting deep into it now, so. Crop this a bit. There we go. Ooh, that mom RNG, look at that. RJ getting the uh the better end of the, the mom RNG, I guess. True, Pokey Pole is like the first major strat. It's been hot, that's that's definitely like the hot uh subject. The Super Series, there's, there's always something that like, 
is the uh, the hot strat to talk about. It's been like you know, Vogler one year and Hamburg Vogler's Vogler topic was huge. It always kind of is, but you know, hamburger strats. Uh, I'm trying to think of other which other hot strats there were. Different boogie tent strats when those came around. Like, oh, what do you what do you do for boogie tent? You know, like. Uh, pretty smooth so far for RJ Krogoth getting the old zoo. He's going to have to go back inside. Wow, tight starter there from RJ. Very good. This could get tricky. Yep, and there it is. The dog pincer. That's what happens when you let any of those enemies chase you too far. You risk the pincer on these spawn tiles here that Krogoth is on. So Krogoth is zipping right by, and he's a few seconds behind timer-wise, so... I'll just keep, like, mental timestamps on, uh, important events to get a true, uh, plus-minus between runners, the delta, if you will. Alright, so picky 540 for Krogoth, 550, so about 14 seconds ahead. Krogoth is, if I may speak like Yoda for a moment. No pokey pull, unfortunate. There's a Poke Pull for RJ. In case you're wondering what the Poke Pull is, I was curious myself until recently. I didn't know this. But it's pretty obvious when you see it. Buzz Buzz flies into Poke and not Ness. So it saves you some time. If you can pull Poke closer to the middle of that rock. Because uh, Buzz, any like uncontrolled uh, character movement is usually pretty slow. So the shorter you can make it, the more time you're going to save. It's one of those things that's developed in the last couple years or so. People figured that out. It's one of those obvious ones you look at it and you're like, oh, that makes sense. And that's what that's what makes a speed run. All those especially a speed run like this, all those tiny tiny little time saves are going to add up over the course of this run. All right, so we got a 14 second delta at Picky. Let's see what we get at uh Starman Jr. I turn this up a bit. Hopefully, game audio is okay. Let's see how many cycles we get. Well, freeze is good. That's fast. I'm gonna try to keep. Oh, nice. Good hit for Krogoth. He's looking at potentially two cycle. 69 for RJ. Nice. Let's see what we get for Buzz Buzz on Krogoth here. Yep, two cycle for Krogoth, nice. 8 12. So Krogoth, a really good uh, Starman fight there, the smash from Buzz Buzz. Two cycle, pretty rare. Two cycle Starman fight. Uh, RJ could do it here. Yeah, 8 40 ish. So yeah, Krogoth definitely made up some time uh, with that two cycle, two cycle compared to the three cycle Starman fight. Not a ton of time though. I mean, it's about a twenty-eight second difference right now. Rip. 
Buzz Buzz, Lardna, you monster. Krogoth entering the wild blue yonder. Sunrise and Onet. Let's see how his walk goes here. We're going to see him. Obviously, ooh. That snake certainly crept up on him. That's going to cost him. I don't think he quite saw it at first. That's probably why it got him like that quickly. That's the thing about this game, you always, there's always something, oh okay, get out of it pretty smoothly. Not too shabby. Definitely getting the business compared to RJ who had a pretty clean walk. Pigpen there, that's the, uh, we name a lot of the NPCs. Pigpen is the one outside the treehouse there. I'll try to, I'll try to catch as many of the NPCs' names as I can. Oh, that butterfly for Krogoth, that's an unfortunate spawn. You don't see that one too often. Just a little bit of shopping here, nothing too crazy. Upselling some items. Min-maxing. The old hospital walk, we all know it well. Oh no, it didn't work. I guess you gotta hit it a bit further left there. got some spawns of his own he's dealing with, so on it giveth, on it taketh. Uh, these shark spawns are pretty nasty, uh, some of these tiles. Uh, this first Pogo Punk can be a little scary, but if you just play your turns right, it's usually not too bad. Uh, everybody missing is pretty common. Sadly. Wow, that, okay, that's a little too much. Mm -hmm. Yep, and there it is. Unfortunate luck for Krogoth. Um, just um, every miss in the book. Uh, luckily that's not a major death. It's, it seems bad now, but if you're going to take a death in on it, it might as well be pre-frank. Opposed to anywhere else. RJ moving on. He had a regular, you know, a normal Pogo Punk fight, not one where everyone misses a million times. Um, that's just kind of a, an unfortunate reality of Ana is Ness just misses a bunch. And not, not much you can do about it. It's just dice rolls. Alright, on to Frank. Yeah, Krogoth is just getting every spawn ever. Frank, pretty typical. Bash heal, bash heal. Try to get lucky. Don't get hit for more than like 24. Mm -hmm. 
not sure if that smash mattered. He might have been dead anyway on that last turn. Frankenstein's fairly scripted. He never hits, he never will like crit on that first turn. And RJ is opting for the auto fight. It can bite if you get unlucky. Yes, yeah, so he's getting kind of low, but Frankenstein's down. 1503 Frankenstein for RJ. See how Krogoth does here. Obviously, you're gonna lose some time to that death. Going for the bread roll. Good move, good move. Don't wanna burn those hamburgers. Twenty-three hertz. Like I said, twenty-four, twenty-five. You're you're in you're in rough shape. You're looking at death, but he doesn't always hit that hard. So there's a minute difference just on Frank Tank. Death by Krogoth, certainly, certainly working out for RJ. Let's see if he can hold on to this lead. Almost two minutes difference, minute 50 on the delta between runners uh, at Frankie Stein. Um, slug grind usually is pretty high variance typically, but I think uh, with the new slug strats that were found, and I'm sure both of these runners will be utilizing that strat. Uh, it it kind of takes a lot of the variance out. There's obviously some, but I feel like that gap is closed quite a bit. Um, the new slug strat is pretty dang consistent. I'll explain what it is if, if anyone's unsure about the new slug strat. I'm sure RJ will set it up pretty soon here. So that's the the slug spawn tile he's looking for. He's going to be looking to spawn a rat. And uh, that's kind of just the setup. Get a rat to spawn on this leftmost tile. And just kind of farm slugs from there. Uh, looking for 22 slugs. That's four for RJ. Uh, so how this setup works is the, the spawn tiles here are only mice and slugs uh, so if you can get a, a mouse to spawn the only other spawn that's possible on those tiles behind the mouse are slugs so you can just kind of cheese that I really wish this strat was found like five or six years ago like pre pre on it minip when you were just forced into these slug grinds. And it was always such a pain. You kind of see it's, it's working out pretty well for RJ here. He's already at 16. No, sorry, 12. It's third pack of four. On his fourth. Thank <laughs> you. 
Obviously, uh, looking for level 8 here for a number of reasons. Uh, mostly rockin'. We need rockin' for Ant, but uh, obviously the, the stats and stuff. Right, RJ having a bit more of a harder time here with these slugs. Oh, nice 4-pack for Krogoth. There we go, so that's 16 for RJ. Again, the magic number is 22. So we'll see, okay, RJ is going for the six pack. It is a nice round number since he's at 16 and he needs 22 if he farms another four pack. It's, it's kind of a waste of time compared to just getting six, which is the exact number he needs. So I can see why he's going for six here. Uh, that is not six. Oh, that is above, okay. Those initial two below him aren't slugs, but he had a good read there. Okay, there's eight for Krogoth. Um, so yeah, good read there from uh, RJ to recognize that those two closest to him were ants, but he's willing to look above, see that six, six little black dots up top and he knows those are slugs. Good awareness there. So he's gonna hit level eight here. We'll kind of look at his stats for RJ. Uh, while Krogoth hits, finish his 8th slug there. Let's see what RJ gets for stats here. Offense 4, so it's pretty much guaranteed enough to one-shot Antoids. I don't think he'll need to check. Yeah, RJ will just know uh, that he can one-shot Antoids. Uh, Krogoth getting numbers 11 and 12 here. Or maybe not, he's just gonna go for this skip anyway. Oh no, okay. Just figures it's faster to stutter. Which is honestly pretty smart. Oh, this spawn here can be tricky with the two. It'll spawn right on top of you sometimes. Nothing you can do about it. Alright, Krogoth getting up to 16 here. So not bad, not a bad slug run. Like I said, there's a lot less variance these days uh, with that strat. And pretty much everyone, you know, everyone who runs this game and pays attention knows about that strat. At this point, it's 70 for the first rocking. Defense down is decent. Pretty much a dead turn. 70 plus 110. Nice. Wow, 180. So Ant's only 30 HP off for RJ. Krogoth getting. Slugs, I imagine 20, up to 20 here. And RJ, ooh, he got the cookie. Uh, it's kind of the, um, mm, he's in trouble here. Yeah, unfortunate for RJ. He got uh, jibated by the cookie. Uh, feels bad, man. He was on pretty good pace there. Um, yeah, it's kind of the, the pitfall of the cookie drop. Um, Sometimes you'll see people just immediately drop that cookie for fear of accidentally doing that, but what happened was RJ was, he kind of just muscle memoried his inventory to a burger, but there was a cookie sitting there off a drop. And of course, Ant punishes him immediately by hitting him for 44, which is pretty much the top end of Ant's standard attack without critting. So yeah, really, really unfortunate luck there, paired with 
just kind of a misclick, quote unquote misclick. Um, luckily, he had a pretty steady lead on Krogoth here. Krogoth is going to hit level 8, um, but RJ is not that far behind. And they're both going to have to basically do the same walk. So, uh, both runners taking a death in on it. Like I said, uh, those pre-frank deaths aren't too bad. It's those, you know, uh, Titanic and Cop strong deaths that really, really lose your time. So yeah, I mean, we're basically going to be even here. Turns out... Giant Step was the great equalizer in this race. Which is typically the case. Um, and on it kind of sets the pace for the whole run. Um, especially with experienced runners. I feel like uh, how good your on it is is going to dictate how good of a boogie tent time you have. Obviously there's other factors in between on it and killing boogie tent, but uh, on it is just so, so volatile. It's just so easy to die. Uh, so 2554 door there, yeah. So Krogoth is about 10 seconds ahead, almost pretty much even here. Which is cool, I guess. I'm sure the runners aren't cool with that, but... Uh, makes for a good race. For everybody watching. Probably incredibly frustrating for the runners. Uh, looks like Krogoth is pretty confident. I didn't see what his stats were, but yeah, he's got enough offense for those Antoids. He, he, okay. So, Ben and the Cookie for sure. I don't want to see... the Cookie miss clicks again. And Krogoth kind of just getting a bit of a smoother walk. Better door despawns. Let's see how the ant fight goes. Eighty for the first rock, and that's good. Slightly above average. Plus 90, wow, pretty good. So that's 170 out of 230 for Krogoth. RJ gets 78. Decent. The defense down for RJ. So they're both getting pretty decent turns here. RJ not messing around, holding off on that rockin'. Again, Ant punishes him. Another, okay, wow. Krogoth's already done, 27-32. Wow, 110. Okay, pretty pretty good. Uh, I miss a lot of Krogoth's fight, but he did decent damage on the Rockins, and it looked like a lot of dead turns, so. I imagine it was just a lot of that continued. All right, 28-01. RJ, so roughly a 30 second difference. 29 seconds. 29 second delta at Titanic Ant. So we're going into Giant Step. RJ had about a two minute lead. We're at about a 10 second difference now. And that is on it, folks. <laughs> I mean, it's not over, but that is on it in a nutshell. He's gone get you. It ain't over yet. Nobody, nobody going for the mystery race for X Death Warp. Nothing too crazy going on in the walk here, obviously. Uh, I didn't see how many burgers were left over for both runners. I assume 
Krogoth is in good shape because of how smooth this fight was. Um, RJ might just go for it too with whatever he has. It might be lower than what Krogoth has, but probably still enough. And since this is round two, I, I'm sure people are going to start playing a little riskier. I think round one, you know, you, you definitely play safe, but once you're 0-1 and, and heading into round two, I imagine you start playing a little more aggressive. Oh, okay, RJ gets too low on burgers. We'll see what he's got. He probably just has enough money left over for the few that... Yeah, you can get two. Oh, we won't be able to see. Yeah, so he's just going to go with the two extra, which is smart. If you have any money left over, you might as well just snag those up real quick if you need them. Alright, let's see how cops go. You're just basically looking to avoid crushing chops. That crit is really nice for Krogoth. A crit is pretty much always going to one-shot a cop. But you're basically looking not for crushing chops from the cops. Keep yourself above 58-ish HP, give or take. Try to conserve your psychic points for strong. Lots of chops for Krogoth. Cop 2 now, and while RJ starts Cop 1. Alright, RJ is staying above 60. Nice, nice. Ooh, two smashes for Krogoth on cops, pretty decent. So Krogoth on the cop four. RJ on two. Uh, four is kind of a tricky one because you want to. Set yourself up properly for strong. You basically don't. Uh, I mean, going into strong with 40 health is a little scary. Ooh, a free burger, nice. Um, but I assume Krogoth will just heal first turn. But yeah, like I was saying, you kind of want to go into strong with decent HP typically, but he had some decent luck there. A lot of smashes. That goes for the life up. Might as well. He's still got two rockins. Ooh, RJ got a burger too, nice. You don't see those too often, I think they're 1 in 8. And even then, you, you don't really see them that often. Alright, 3204. Captain Strong for Krogoth, GG on it. It's kind of the more realistic on it, as opposed to the ones we saw last night that were like... Pretty godlike. I think we had two sub 28 on it last night. One being sub 27, I believe, which is insanely good. There's a little bit more realistic times how on it can treat people. Uh, let's see how strong goes for RJ. Going right for the rock, and he's got plenty of HP. Safe to do so. Wise heal. We got a strong, strong laying in today. 23. Okay, so 33, 12. So. Yeah, RJ lost about a minute there. I think it was the, the burger buying. It was a bit of time loss and uh, Krogoth just had like really smooth cops, whereas RJ had pretty standard, pretty standard cop fights. Krogoth had a few smashes in there. But both runners out of on it. Always feels good. Breathe a sigh of relief. RJ going for that burger. He's probably just trying to stock up for Apple Kid and Happy Happy Village.
Uh, so just kind of some story building here. I kind of want to make sure you got obviously some food items for Apple Kid, 200 bucks. That's what RJ is going for now. You kind of just want to max out on this ATM. Uh, you need most of this money for the rest of at least boogie percent. So, and safety save here. That's going to set us up for a death warp. So I guess less safety save, more death warp save. But it is kind of uh, a safety if something really bad happens. It's pretty rare, but. can function as a backup in case something goes horribly wrong. But as we saw with other races, it can... If you die to a, a flagged boss, it can cause some issues. But uh, we won't focus too much on that. Just try not to die to flagged bosses, I guess. Easier said than done. Um, so just a lot of despawning here. Just trying to get through the initial part of Peaceful Rest Valley here. Um, the butterfly spawn rate is pretty high. So that's kind of why you don't see people go for a heal after finishing on it. This is between Tucson and Peaceful Rest Valley, this, the butterfly spawn rates are ginormous. We'll see Krogoth here. You don't have to actually see the pencil. You just have to hit a certain spot on the map. And the game will load in the pencil right about there. Ah, that was not yet. You see Krogoth kind of double dip there. Wasn't quite high enough the first time. And what that's going to do is um, flag, once that pencil is loaded into memory, that's going to flag the game for setting the next story trigger. A phone call coming out of the cave here. Let's see RJ make the, kind of the same move. Boop. Doesn't have to see it, just enough for the game to see it off screen. Uh, Peaceful Rest Valley itself, once we get there, can be pretty rough. I'm sure we'll see either a widening or a closing of the gap here based on PRV, depending on what uh, the runners get here. We saw about a minute 10 difference, or not even a minute 10. Uh, difference at Captain Strong. So we'll see what that difference is after PRV. Uh, don't have to fight Everdread. Optional boss fight. Some people, some people will fight Everdread. It's not uncommon. Not even a terrible strat just to do it, but typically, just a waste of time. Loves me some Tucson music. Pretty much any music that has to do with Tucson, Polestar. It's good music. Alright, Krogoth getting into PRV here. Spawn tiles here are pretty nutty. Bike music is pretty good. That's that's a polarizing one. People either love it or hate it. I like it. I 
Yeah, the spawn tiles in here are a plenty. It's like a checkerboard. So you see Krogoth kind of stutter stepping there. You're going to see kind of. Ooh, scary. Yep, he's just stuck. That's quite unfortunate. Those swoopers will get you in those tight spots. But yeah, you'll, you'll kind of see the racers try to. T wow, that's a weird butterfly spawn that RJ just got. Um, you see them kind of take specific movements through here. That's to, oh, that's to kind of mitigate the spawns they get. Try to reduce the number by taking specific movements, but sometimes it can kind of bite you in the butt. Yeah, PRV is rough. There's nothing cool about it. Uh, so that was kind of just enough for what, like I said, it's going to close the gap, PRV. That's just, just what RJ needed to uh, close that gap. So you see RJ here, after he gets these despawns, he'll kind of move straight up and left. Um, that's kind of a known despawn for the enemies uh, t to the lower left ahead. So it goes straight up, diagonal down left, and that forces a despawn here. A lot of those kinds of movements in the run. Pretty, pretty close one here, and, and like it's been all over the place. It's not like you know, RJ was ahead, and then Krogoth pulled ahead, and then RJ pulled ahead again, and now we're just kind of even. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's definitely been all over the place. All right, so 41 and a half door for RJ, so he definitely, uh, you know, caught up there, caught up, and then some. Much in part to that fight that Krogoth had to take, so 18 seconds. So it was a minute delta at the end of Onnit, now we're at 18 seconds in RJ's favor. So yeah, still really close here. Anyone's race. see RJ's door here. I, I do not recommend holding left on that door. It's one you kind of want to chill on. Don't want to buffer any movements on that first cultist door. Alright, shack fight. Otherwise known as Shaquille O'Neal battle. Uh, so for anyone wondering what I was talking earlier about scripted or like flagged bosses, cultists are one of those enemies. These guys are flagged bosses, so if you die here it can get kinda hairy. You also can't run from them. You can't run from any flag boss. No trifecta? Nope. Let's see what Krogoth gets. 68. No trifecta. It usually misses the crow based on their speed. Okay, decent. Ooh, Cultist C is no fun. Especially. Wow, well, then he gets the 100. That cultist is pretty close to dead there. See, just one shot should do it, yep. Yeah, typical typical shack fight strat is just rocking, rocking, rocking. Hopefully there's no calls for help. Uh, 
Uh, this first cultist, basically the same idea. You just don't want calls for help. You just kind of want to bash away. If he calls for help, it be kind of a resource hog. Well, that was that was quite the race last night. Definitely the highlight of the first round. It lived up to the hype. The VOD is there. If you... Oh, there's the call for help I was talking about. Nice. Ness with the outspeed. Uh, car paints are here for RJ. This is a mostly scripted fight. Uh, scripted enough that... If you know the patterns, it's pretty easy to predict and move ahead. 27 health for RJ. That's... Oh wow, that smash. You could definitely mash it out. I don't know if I personally feel comfortable going with 27, but RJ is risking it. Skip sandwich, good strats. It's pretty much a cookie. Keep your low HP. Definitely smart. He's thinking about it. He's like, I'm not getting attacked. He's... he's Ooh, this is scary. Yeah. That's what... Yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah, RJ is probably not feeling too good about that one. Oh, Skip Sandwich is still going, though. So the idea there... is to eat the Skip Sandwich to keep your HP low... Yeah, I think RJ just kind of lost track of turns, and by the time he realized what was coming, it was too late. 6 HP is... no one's gonna mash that one out. Yeah, <laughs> run, run, run. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty devastating for RJ. That's a pretty, pretty chunky time loss. It's earthbound. Anything can happen. Alright. Krogoth going for the death warp. I didn't notice his HP. Forty-seven, decent. So we're dropping the items here. Set ourselves up for the death warp. Those crows can be tricky. They want to fight. time. He's been playing along lately. Yeah, so far so good. Ooh, no smash, no smash. I'm not sure why Krogoth is uh, attacking with Ness. I guess he wants to l shake off the feeling strange, but he could just end up killing them all. Oh, kills Paula, nice. Yeah, he's just gonna kill them. Oh, that, yeah. That's, that's why we don't attack more. I guess he, he does have fire strats. He could, he could be doing it on purpose. I don't know. Um, but I don't think so. Especially since Paula was dying. But Paula does have fire now, which is useful. Yeah, maybe, maybe Krogoth just wanted to stick it to Mole for once. There we go. Alright, Ness is the one you want down first. You just auto-fight with Paula, and there you go. Alright, 
Yeah, feed them your ATM card. Moles are notoriously hungry for cheap plastic. Alright. Zam's a dang. Krogoth is back in Tucson. Easy peasy. Right, let's see how much of a difference there is here at Car Painter. Um, Krogoth had about a 46 minute Car Painter kill, roughly. So it's four minutes right now. RJ does have a ton of psychic points. That's probably the only caveat to coming into this after dying. So you're, you're pretty loaded on psychic points. And then container down for RJ. So about a f four to almost five minute difference here. Which is, that's about right for a car painter death. It's roughly four minutes. Uh, this is a four round Swiss, so RJ really, really needs a W here. I mean, obviously both racers are You know, clawing away for a W here, being, both being 0-1 and, and it being four rounds into top eight. Um, but you gotta imagine RJ is feeling pretty desperate at this point just to just to make up some kind of time here. And a boogie percent, it's, it's tough to make up, you know, those, f those four or five minutes. That'd take a small miracle to close that gap. You know, full glitches run, sure, you can close five minutes, but what you percent, it's tough. So if, if Krogoth knows the lead he has here, I imagine he's gonna play it pretty, pretty tight and just try not to mess up, you know? He knows that four minutes is, is a good enough buffer that if you just play your game and even somewhat conservatively, um, there's a pretty good chance to win. That's kind of the two sides of the coin here with this race at this point. Krogoth kind of just trying to keep that lead and, and RJ obviously desperate to, to close it. Commentator's curse, yeah, every time. But yeah, like, like Grandpa said, it's, not, it's never over till it's over. I'm not ruling anyone out anyone out at this point at all. Don't ask about me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Alright, decent mole so far. Obviously you want nests down first, but... Playing trolley. All right, there it is. About time, Mr. Mole. Mother one burns. It's a rope burn. All right, what are? Well, I promise I wouldn't. I promise RJ I wouldn't ask about which side of bus. So I'll, I'll just observe which side of bus we're gonna get here. Dip. Uh, no, see what? Why? Why though? Because. Uh. Do 
do do. Speaking of Mother One, there's a Mother One remix. He's no. <laughs> We're all intimidated by Uko's skill. It, it's the same in EB. Uko crushes. Here, Runaway Five show. Oh, clean graveyard so far for Krogoth. Nice, good graveyard. That's another one of those spots. If you just follow kind of the right pathing, path, you should be okay most of the time. I was wondering if that was emulator. I assumed it was. And yeah, especially for emulator, that's a really good time. Obviously, I mean, it was the best so far. Yeah, that was quite the free graveyard for Krogoth. Nice. Love me some SNES GT. <laughs> Can't say I'm too surprised it crashed the emulator, but that's still pretty funny. That was crazy. I don't think anyone noticed until you said something. Like, I, I noticed you had said it in chat, and I was like, oh man, that is the debug menu. Even commentators, like, it took them a minute to just look over. You don't see that too often. Actually hitting debug menu. PC, nice. Hell yeah. Bewilt. Krogoth? Oh, <laughs> it was the Tony thing. I just looked down and it was like, why? Oh no, RJ, no. No. <laughs> he must be so tilted with this run right now. Oh my goodness. He'll probably never do right side bus again. Rip right side bus for RJ for eternity. <laughs> Straight down bus. <laughs> uh, sad face, RJ. Yeah. Right side bus is dead, yep. Never again. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll still keep doing it, but... I 
Yeah, straight straight down bus is a bold move. You gotta respect it. No, no, I'm not a left side buster. Absolutely not. Right side bus for life. It's objectively faster, unless you hit the photo trigger. <laughs> No, no, I will harshly judge left side bus. Unless you're Hunter and you go top side building. In which case I will super judge. Wow, that was quite the drag there from Krogoth. Now it's literally go to the left side around the bus to avoid the photo trigger. Yeah, I wasn't sure if Monkey was going to catch that goat. The Rock Bus. No Tassie. The old monkey special. Oh, I see we have a dirty left side bus mod in chat. Nice, we got Zakubi and Uko's race scheduled for Monday. Nice. That will be hype. Sweaty, sweaty left side busser. Uh, this theme is up there in my book too. I love the Snowwood theme. Rogoth entering the Cave of Fear, or the Pond Cave. Another one of those despawn movements there. Get that goat to no spawn down below. We see any time of proto skip, no. No attempt at any type of proto skip. Decent start for Proto. If he can bash out this last turn and not miss. Yeah, nice. Okay. Proto down, always a relief. Oh, he's got a decent duck set up. Right off the gun. If we can get it to move left. Come on, duck. There he goes. That should do it. Still close though. Yeah, he got it. It moved right a little too much. Once he walked by. Uh oh, three health. Going for it. Nice. Yeah, Bubble Monkey with the death blow. Well done, lad. This proto skip would be free were it not for Bubble Monkey. Uh, nice, okay, good setup. Monkey cooperated. Like 
If it was just that Jeff there, that, f that skip would be free every time. I guess technically this is Pond Cave. I misspoke earlier. Krogoth was going into Brick Road, not Pond Cave. This is Pond Cave. I'll show you the pond once we once we get in there. It's a wee little pond. <laughs> RJ, the door trigger. Yeah, uh, last night's race was super good. Definitely recommend the VOD. Wow, Krogoth just going for it. He says, screw these despawns. I'm stuttering. And then I'm gonna get red swirled. This could be bad. If he doesn't get out of this. Yeah, last night's race was super good. VOD's up. Definitely recommended viewing. Commentary A+, plus, race A+. Plus. Good times had by all. Okay, Krogoth, get out of it. There's the pond. A tiny little pond there. Nice empty last room, at least for the first part. I feel like I'm always despawning this first door. A ton. Yeah, for sure. Like Hunter and X, like Hunter X is just good. Like just throw anyone in with Hunter and it's gonna be hilarious. But yeah, especially Arts. Uh, Hunter and RJ is a super good team too. We've had them for a couple. Oh, a decent spawn there for Krogoth. Yeah, he's got it. Get those mushrooms to aggro. Nice and low. That'd be cool if we can get the same people. Pretty decent race. I'm sure RJ's feeling that car painter death. It's certainly the difference here. See, Duck usually spawns way up there, typically. That's normal. The spawn Krogoth got was definitely favorable. In a race, I don't think so, but I can't say for sure. I don't think I've, I've ever seen it in a race I've ever done. Or like, you know, I've restreamed. But I'm sure it's happened. I just like can't think of it specifically. Yeah, it was probably a long time ago. People don't really go for it much these days. It's like so incredibly rare and difficult to pull off that like people are kind of just like, ah, oh, whatever. Just fight the damn thing. Nice. Everyone skipped second proto. Good stuff. First proto skip was the hotness, like when people first started doing it.
Oh, that's tough. Stutter steps. Not working out in Pond Cave today for the racers. There are setups. There's a bunch of different setups for first proto. I can think of at least four different setups right now. Um, and they're all you know, consistent to varying degrees. Um, some people pull it way up. Like try to get it to come way up to the straight line and skip it much like in the same way you do with second proto. Whereas other people will just kind of scoot around it in the tight space where it spawns. Yeah, I think Phallix dragged it up. He did the drag up method, which is, I think, much more consistent. Yeah, 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 pull it way up. Yep, for sure. And just get it to aggro from left to right. Um, I've seen Jams do a variation of that where he gets, he goes around to the top of the barrier and forces the present to aggro up so it gets way, way up, which is also pretty smart. Jams is a pretty smart dude in general with those kinds of things. And it takes a long time, obviously. Not quite close enough, Krogoth. Krogoth coming into the home stretch here. See how his boogie fight goes. I'm sure we'll see defend, defend, BBR. That seems to be the widely accepted first turn strat. Boogie tent approach. Spooky face. Skyrunner music. Mm. Ooh, nope, nope. Defend, defend, BBR. We're going, we're going full DPS. Oh, that's right, he has fire. That's right, the mole thing. Fire strats are good. I forgot about that myself. 350 out of the BBR. It's low, but it's still decent. Yeah, GG. GG Krogoth, gonna take this one away. Gonna go one and one, putting RJ, last year's champ, going 0 and 2. He's not totally out of it, he can still make top 8, but he's, he's gotta do pretty well. These next two races, must win situation. For RJ coming up on these next two, and GG's to Krogoth, bringing himself to 1 and 1. Official time's on the fly, honey. One thirteen twenty-two. Very nice. Well played, Krogoth. Just kept that lead. That's all he had to do was, you know, capitalize on RJ's unfortunate luck, and that's what he did. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Go being former champ doesn't mean too much. Earthbound likes to punish indiscriminately. GG's Krogoth, well played. Congrats. Oh, nice. We got tent glitch too. Beautiful. As is tradition.
right, boogie time for AJ. Yeah, you had a it, ant fight, like, it was just over before I could say anything. I was, like, commentating it and looked away to commentate RJ for a second. All of a sudden, it was over. And, yeah, your comp fights were super smooth. I think you had, what, two or three crits in there? Bearless. Bearless for RJ. Yeah, both, both racers having a death and on it. Pretty tough. Truly is Ooh, 42 decent. Well, that's actually pretty good. Gonna save a little bit of time there with Paul being dead. GG's RJ. Yeah, it looks like that four minute that four minute margin held strong. That's about what we're gonna finish at here. Four minute difference. Uh, both racers taking a fight in Pond Cave, getting getting spicy with their stutters. Uh, I believe RJ's playing on the VC ROM, which is changed. 117 flat, very nice RJ. GG's, tough luck. But yeah, the, uh, they updated the virtual console ROM to have less, uh, like, seizure-y like screen jitters and all that stuff, and sparks, and kind of just blurs. Right, the classic, yeah, which I believe uses the same ROM. They updated for the VC way back. Well, it's different from the, you know, the cartridge ROM. Uh, but anyway... That is the race for the night. Uh, GG's to the racers. Uh, we do have some races coming up Thursday. We're going to have a doubleheader uh, starting at 7 o'clock. That race will be Desert Way versus Wa, And then immediately after that, we'll have Heiko versus Hunter. So be on the lookout for that. All times Eastern. Uh, be sure to follow. If you like what you see. Yeah, no problem. No problem for the commentary. My pleasure. Um, yeah, thanks for the racers for the race. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to find a host here. Oh, it's looking like it's going to be 2chan. Um, I don't see anyone speedrunning Earthbound. Doot, 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 doot. Yeah, we're going to host 2chan. Um, two chans on that partner push, so show her some love. Uh, she did our our background here and the artwork for the channel, so much appreciated to two chan. I always like to host her. Runs Earthbound from time to time. I think she's doing Sonic now. So enjoy two chan. Thanks for watching. Tune in on Thursday, and I will see y'all later.